The lectionary, revised common lectionary that so many of the churches use to select their scripture is interesting in the sense that as you start this march toward Advent, towards the Christmas story, uh, they, they actually start at the end of the story. And I don't mean they start at the manger, they start even beyond the crucifixion. They start with prophecies of Jesus. They start with the with with the the birth of the idea, shall we say. Let me share with you from the book of Daniel. Book of Daniel, Old Testament, uh, chapter seven. I'll be reading uh, thirteen and fourteen. I was watching in the night visions, and behold, one like the Son of Man coming with the clouds of heaven. He came to the Ancient of Days, and they brought him before him. Then to him was given dominion and glory and a kingdom that all peoples, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away, and his kingdom, the one which shall not be destroyed. God had God's blessing to this reading of the Word. This is a very, uh, there are so many dreams being told by the prophet Daniel. And, and the Ancient of Days, of course, a reference to God, a reference to the Eternal One, to the One that is, no matter how old you are, God is far, far more old, far older and more ancient than we are. You have one like the Son of Man. Son of Man is a reference to humans in general. Uh, uh, Ezekiel is called the Son of Man by one of the angels that spoke to him. But here, generally speaking, the concept is that this is a reference to, to the Messiah, to the coming Messiah. Uh, they brought him near, and to him was given dominion and glory and a kingdom that all peoples, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away. His kingdom, the one which shall not be destroyed. We certainly, in our 21st century ears, hear that as a reference to Jesus, as a reference to the Messiah. And indeed, Jesus himself lays claim to it. Book of Mark. This is at his trial, when Jesus has been, has been brought before the chief priests, the high priest stood in, in the midst and asked Jesus, Do you answer nothing? What is it these men testify against you? But Jesus kept silent and answered nothing. And again, the, the high priest asked him, saying to him, Are you the Christ, the Son of the Blessed? And Jesus said, I am. And you will see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of the power, coming with the clouds in heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, What further need do we have of witnesses? You have heard the blasphemy. What do you think? And they all condemned him to be deserving of death. And indeed it was blasphemy and was deserving of death if it was false. If it was false. But in the case of Jesus, it was a true statement. He's the one who dared to say, I am, using the holy name of, of God to answer the question. And when he says this, you will see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of the power and coming in the clouds of heaven. You recall Daniel saw that, the, the one like the Son of Man uh, uh, coming in the clouds of heaven. So Jesus has laid claim to that. And this is one of those situations where we might need more than one more than one reference to understand exactly what that encounter with the high priest was like. What was actually said, because here Jesus has answered, I am. The priest simply asked him, are you Christ, the Son of the Blessed? God being referred to as the Blessed, because people did not want to say the holy name of God. And, and Jesus turned the tables and did the same thing. says, yes I am, and you will see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of the power, the Blessed the power, the Ancient of Days. Matthew's account adds few details to this. And the high priest arose and said to him, Do you answer nothing? What is it these men testify against you? You remember, that's the same 
Same story. But Jesus kept silent, and the high priest answered and said to him, I put you under oath by the living God. Well, the trail added here. I put you, Jesus, under oath by the living God. Tell us if you are the Christ, the Son of God. Jesus was a law abider in his day. He, he, he kept the law. He, he treasured the law and the entire word of God. And here the high priest is putting him under a solemn oath. He's basically, and it's something they weren't supposed to do. You know, even then they had the, the sense that you don't have to incriminate yourself. He didn't have to say anything that would get him in trouble with the authorities. But when it was called upon him, I put you under oath. You have to answer. And you have to answer correctly. And, and God Almighty, the Ancient of Days, compels you to answer this question. Jesus wasn't showing off. Jesus was, was simply being a good son, simply being obedient. And then what did he say? Jesus said to him, It is as you said. Nevertheless, I say to you here again, Hereafter you will see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of the power and coming on the clouds in heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes. He has spoken blasphemy. What need do we have of further witnesses? Look, you have heard his blasphemy. What do you think? And they answered him, he is deserving of death. A blasphemy only if it was false. But it's true. Let me tell you how old I am. And I'll do this by, um, by example. There was a day that window screens were metal. You remember that? You know, they're like nylon and you can tear them up with your finger. You know? They used to be metal, really nice grade of metal. And, and, and there was a kit you could order out of the, there was a kit you could order out of the back of the comic book. It was a crystal radio. You want to remember a crystal radio? It's a crystal. It doesn't even use a battery. It uses no power source whatsoever. It's a very simple machine. And this thing was a little red. It was a little, was a little red tube and it had an antenna coming out of it. And that antenna didn't quite work. So you get a wire with an alligator clip and clip it to your antenna. And you clip the other end to your um, to the um, that metal screen on your window in your bedroom. And you had a, you had an earphone. So you sit there listening to, to radio. And of course, during the day, the signal is taken over by some redneck country station in downtown West Point, Georgia. <laughs> I was not in the mood in those days. Now I love it. Now, by the way, I'm, you know, don't make no money. I'm just exaggerating for the point of making an illustration here. If you want to hear some really good redneck country music, please join us tonight. <laughs> it's my favorite kind of music. But it wasn't at that time. So, during the day, all I could get was, was that downtown radio station. But late, late, late at night, that downtown radio station would turn off. They would, they would sign off and play the Star Spangled Banner, and they would just go off the air. And now I could pick up WLS, Chicago. You could pick up a, and you didn't even have batteries in this thing. You could pick up a radio station in Chicago and hear just the latest heathen killer devil music. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. See, because sometimes you have all these channels and they're going at the same. Both of them, WLS was going at the same time as the downtown West Point station was going, WBMK or whatever it was. But you couldn't hear it because one was overwhelming the other. The, the beautiful thing about prophecy and about this whole story and about reading this, one like the Son of Man came before the ancient of days and to him was given dominion and power and it says that people of all nations, all languages, all different kind of people would serve him and his kingdom would have no end. See, the story of Jesus is not something that starts here and ends here. The story of the Messiah is not necessarily something that, that has a beginning and has an end. It does in terms of in terms of that physical story being told but in terms of eternity, it's a station that runs 24 hours a day. It's always been going. God has always planned to give dominion 
to the Son of Man, the Son of God. God has always planned that there would be a kingdom that would have no end. God has always planned that there would come a day when people of all nations, all languages, all countries, all sorts of people would hear the word and would praise God in their own language. We all know about this. It's, it's God's plan for this world. God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. Well, God loved the world before. Amen. He gave His only begotten Son. And God loves the world now. And when David was in some of the Psalms, you see David looking forward. And here in Daniel, he's received a, a vision of the Son of Man, a, a vision of that, of that grand and glorious plan, which is already in place. It's already set up for us. It's already part of God's plan. God already loves us so much that God, in the case of David, will sin. And in our case, did sin. And when Jesus was here, has sinned going all the time. It's a radio station that goes 24-7. The book of Revelation describes Jesus as the Lamb that was slain from the foundation of the world. The Lamb that was slain from the foundation of the world. That doesn't mean that Jesus is eternally suffering. It does mean that God is eternally sacrificing for us. This is a story, it's a station that's gone along all the time. And we can tune into it. You can have that, you can have it now. You can have the life, death, resurrection, the birth, and the crucifixion. The, the, uh, the, the angels saying glory to God in the highest. The Jesus saying it is finished. The angels saying he is not here, but he is risen. That radio station is going all the time. And, and, it's, and it's something that we can tune into at any time. It's a gift that God has given to all people of all times, of all nations, of all languages. It's a story that really didn't start. It's a story that is as ancient as the ancient days. What is the point of that? Daniel, we, we talked, we've talked before about how sometimes the things of earth are actually shadows of things in heaven. And we've talked about the concept of a thin place where you can where where it feels like you can hear God. Where it feels like you, you can see God through all the confusion. And when we celebrate Christmas and when we celebrate Easter, when we gather in this place, what we are doing is we are saying, this is the place that I have come all of my life to get close to God. And this is the event that has happened year after year that I've gotten to get close to God. And, and this is the music I've always listened to at Christmas that made me feel like I was close to God and made me remember the sacrifice that God has made for me. We've got a thin place here where we're close to God. But we Christians know that the radio station's going all the time. It's going 24-7. And there's two ways to get that, to pick up on that station. There's two ways to pick up on that signal. There's two ways to get close to God. To get close to God. Either we can have a very refined radio that, that has very, very fine adjustments and great amplification and it can separate those somehow it can separate those signals you ever have one of those radios I mean these days see, kids don't understand this they, they push a button and it goes till the digital station hits the next one you know or they, they call up a satellite and tell it what they want to hear you know or they go online and, and, and stream it down but, but that dial is just taking turn it ever so slight oh there was no loss so turn it back turn it back you gotta work at it there's another way can wait till the other stations go off the air. You can you can you can catch that station when there's nothing between you and it, when the other signals have faded. Of course, you can also make that the strongest signal in your life. See, the thing is that as Christmas comes along, there's there's all of these signals going on, and there's there's the there's the uh, and, it, and it changes every year. The worst thing I saw this year of the of the uh, the advertisements and the the tendency of uh, of Madison Avenue is oh here you've got cranberry shots and you've got uh, you've got uh, turkey sliders. Happy Thanksgiving! I want you all to eat fast and get out of here so I can get to the stores. Isn't that terrible? Just let me get let me get over Thanksgiving because I want to go shopping. Shopping. That's a 
that's a station that, that is parallel to this whole Ancient of Days thing, but it's, cover, it's covering it up, and for some of us, it's in the way. Oh, i got to get my stuff. i got to I gotta make the sale. i got to save that money. i got to get the new credit card. i got to buy my Christmas presents. i got to do all my shopping now. It's a strong signal. It tends to hide that babe in a manger story of Christmas. You've got the whole, the, the whole Santa Claus story. It's a wonderful story. It's a wonderful thing. Our children really need it, and, and we love it. And, and, and it, it is, it is, it's one of the ways that they see the generosity of God because, after all, we're talking about St. Nicholas who was inspired by Jesus. He said, God gave me eternal life. I'm going to give the children something. But it's another signal that that, that for some of our world, they don't understand that connection. There's no Jesus behind it. There's no Jesus behind it. We come to the thin places, or we, we meditate, or we, we eliminate, start eliminating all the complexities in our life so that we can, so that we can get that, that clear signal to God, that clear signal to the ancient day, so that we can stop and see one like the Son of Man at the right hand of God, and see Him. And Jesus came to, to, came to, to cross that bridge, so to speak, to come on the other side of the veil. Now it's like, all right, so for now, Jesus is saying, that, that time that we celebrate as Christmas, and that time that we celebrate as Easter, that lifespan and that ministry span that we celebrate as Jesus Christ, that's when God finally cranked that signal up as high as it would go. And it overwhelmed everything. And then he stepped back and said, y'all remember that. Because that station is going all the time. And at Christmas, we have an opportunity to, to point out that station. To tell people, oh, yes, I know you hear the shopping thing, but have you thought about why they're shopping? Do you know the meaning of the holly? Do you know the meaning of the tinsel? Do you know the meaning behind the evergreen tree? Do you understand that, you're, that these traditions were all about pointing to Jesus, pointing to Jesus? Do you remember the Christmas story? Well, it didn't just happen a long time ago, and it didn't just have one meaning for one day. It's happening eternally. It is always going on. You just got to tune in. They say, you know, oh, I wish we could have that Christmas spirit all year long. You can. Depending on what you call Christmas spirit, if you want the, the spirit of shopping all year long, I don't recommend that. That doesn't work out well. <laughs> you don't do that too many years before you, you're really going to be the, you know, it's not, you're, not, you're not shopping all year long, but you're paying all year long. That's right. Isn't that you know, or the uh, the winter wonderland and the thought of the thought of winter and the beauty of nature and everything. It's all wonderful, but that's another signal. The ancient of days is where we want to tune in now. And here's here's one more issue we got. Is that one of the signals, one of those stations, the one that's closest to us, is the one that's our lives. It's the complexities of my life. It's the it's it's my it's my sore foot and it's my the bills I have to pay and it's the, the questions I still can't answer. It's all my signal and, and my stuff and my attention span and, and it's me, me, me. It's all about me, the stuff I don't have and the stuff I want to get, and the goals that I have and the, and all of this. It's it's but the issue is that that, that station goes off the air. Eventually. You know, that's that age. I'm not the ancient of days. You know, I have not existed eternally. Some people want to say, oh, yes, you exist eternally, or you're, you're always coming back and forth in nature one way or another. That's not true. The story that we have is that it, is upon, it falls upon man to live and die once, and after that, the judgment. That station is temporary. That station of the, the static of our lives. We can tune in, and yes, it's, a, it's, it's nice, and it's good music, maybe, or maybe it's suffering. Nevertheless, it's temporary. I love the, the, the statement, seek the Lord while He can be found. You know, seek the Lord while He can be found. While we are living, while we are on this side of the veil, we've got to learn to tune in. To 
tune in to the ancient of days, to tune in to God. We've got to start realizing while we're here, while we can do something about it, while we can share it with others who haven't heard it yet, we've got to learn to tune in past these to the ancient of days. Jesus came that we might have life and have life more abundant. Jesus came not to condemn the world, but to be the Savior. God loved the world so much, God sent God's Son, that whoever believes will not perish, but have eternal life. That's the Christmas story, and that's the Easter story, and that's the Pentecost story. That's the signal that has gone for eternity. It's as eternal as God has said. We have to tune in. We have to teach others. We have to show them what station that is. I pray we can do that this holiday, this Christmas.